Can we call the meeting to order? Yes, please. Yes. Stephen Natalia and I. Same as I. Mario. I. First on the agenda is public comment and the topic. Uh, yes, if you don't mind. Now to take a few minutes to update you on know, where we stand with the Canic Street property. Um, meeting with the uh, Community Preservation Committee next Wednesday. We need to make a decision about whether or not to recommend the project to town meeting. <clears throat> and the next step will be to go to town meeting. The town meeting has to vote to fund the project. Um, then the Board of Selectmen are in a position where they can exercise the first refusal. However, in order to do that, we do have to hold a hearing. Now, fortunately, the notice is your typical 48 hours. It's not to those newspaper notices. Um, and then there's a uh, we'll probably at the same time we get through that, uh, do a title search. Um, and then in order to exercise the language first refusal, we have to send notice to the seller and buyer um, along with the proposed purchase and sale agreement. And then after all that, we have to record the notice to exercise at the registry of tenants. <clears throat> Take all those steps, we end up and we'll end up with the opportunity to purchase the property. But I just wanted to let you know stand now and also to give you a up to, uh, heads up on the fact that you need to hold it here and exercise it. Thank you. And that yeah. hearing wouldn't change regardless of the funding source, because if we let's just say hypothetically we did not use CPC dollars. And we were going to use free cash. Would the hearing process change in any way? No, no. The hearing is uh, exclusively for you to exercise the right, regardless of whether the money is coming from. Okay. Is there anything else that we can do? No, uh, no not right now. Um, a week from tomorrow is for the community preservation. Oh, next week is going to yeah. be a reservation, yeah. not tomorrow. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Okay. Any other public comment? Seeing none, we will go to the 4.1 um, technology committee update. Steve Acton, Steve Rackton. Oh, <laughs> um, So I just wanted to update the board with what technology committee is doing. First, um, we are not planning to renew our agreements with the current um, IT managed service provider that we have. We are instead working on a resource sharing plan with the school district. So the school district, uh, we've been working very closely with the IT director of the school system, and we agreed that we can share a resource that is to be hired. Uh, the school system would assume the would uh, be the person that would be paying this person. The town would <clears throat> reimburse the school for half that person's salary and benefits, just like we do with the, with the school with the resource office. Okay, just the other way around. Um, this will work out really well because uh, we'll have this person available in the town. Uh, for probably 20 hours a week, which is a lot more than what we're currently getting from the company we're currently using. Um, we've created a draft of a memorandum of understanding, which would put down the agreement in writing. Um, KP Law has reviewed it, given us some feedback, and Kelly's going to meet um, the school, uh, the IT director tomorrow, I think, to go over it with them and as soon as we can get um, the school to, to agree with it, we can get it signed on both sides. And they can begin the process of interviewing and hiring this person. Um, we will then um, be looking to hire a company that can do 24 7 network monitoring of the town network um, and provide off hours support. So this person would not be available. We're going to hire off hours on weekends, so we're going to look to hire a company that would be able to do that should there be a major issue um, with computers at police station or the fire station. Um, the thing that is important to understand is um, if the town were 
to be hit with a ransomware attack, um, the average downtime from those things is 21 days, which is incredible. I mean, can you imagine not being able to have anyone at town hall be able to use a computer for a day? So that's why the network monitoring thing is so important because it will help us prevent um, such an event. We're also working on drafting a cybersecurity uh, incident response plan that would say it's just like the uh, the name of the other plan that we did um, last year. Oh, the NDT. Yes, it's like that oh, for computers, <laughs> right? Um, so it's um, a similar kind of thing. Should a, should a cyber attack occur, how would the town respond? What do we need to do? To respond to that and recover from this <laughs> company on board, we can coordinate that plan with them to make sure that everybody that needs to talk to other you know, so we have all the pieces connected. Um, so that's the first. The second thing is the technology committee has um, been has created uh, with a consultant. The design for the audio visual stuff for the community center, which we're going to review soon. Uh, um, Matthew who protects. Um, we've also created the design for the IT for that building. Um, and we now have to hire a company to procure the equipment and install it at the appropriate time so that when the building is ready, all that stuff will be installed. And this is because the AV and the IT stuff were uh, not within the architect's scope. It, it was the architect said, I have no expertise in that area. <clears throat> the technology committee offered to help do that. Um, we were here last week to ask your, for your approval of a grant that we have written for installing fiber optic cable to all the town buildings. Um, with all the things that the technology committee has been involved in, uh, I think, and I've been thinking this, this has been on my mind for a while, I think it's time that the town recognize that we need to have a, a staff IT person. Uh, and in next year's budget, I'm going to ask that we do that. I don't know yet. Uh, maybe we can start, you know, part time. But somebody needs to be doing this. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the technology committee is a bunch of volunteers like me. Um, and we all have day jobs and we can't be worried about all of this stuff the time. Um, that's why I think we need a staff person to do this. If we had a staff person, that person would have been responsible for the design of the uh, IT stuff in the community center, the, the <coughs> stuff, and all the stuff that goes on here um, and at the police and fire station. So uh, I think the town is, if you could imagine um, having not having access to their computers for a significant amount of time. Uh, you know, that's, uh, that's the worst thing that I can imagine happens. You need uh, a person whose job it is is to make sure that doesn't. So in next year's budget, I'm going to ask for hiring. And I, like, like I said, at this point, I don't know whether it's a full time or not. But the last thing I wanted to just quickly review with you is um, in January, uh, we sent out um, in the, the annual census form a survey asking people for their feedback on their degree of satisfaction or dissatisfaction with internet access in town. Given the fact that so many people are working at home still, that we have students who are working from home, especially during the height of the pandemic, is having reliable and affordable internet access is a, uh, a concern. Um, I don't know about anyone else here, but my bill with charter has just been going like this. And I don't have any, I just have basic cable and internet access. It's very expensive. 
Um, so we asked um, a number of questions, and in the in your packet, you should have uh, a copy of what the survey questions were. Um, over ninety percent of the of the people, so we uh, we sent out Kelly mailed out over three thousand uh, yeah uh, census forms, and we got a return rate of over forty three percent to the survey, which is pretty great. To see. Um, in addition, we got over 200 people who offered to volunteer to serve on a focus group to, to delve deeper into what some of the issues are, which was also a great case. So out of the survey, um, uh, over 90% of the people that live in Upton that have internet service at home use chart because they're the only uh, only viable option. There's a small section by Peppercorn Hill that is served by Verizon, <laughs> but that's the only uh, other thing we have. The problem is, is that uh, about 25% of the people said they're very satisfied or somewhat satisfied, and an equal number said they are dissatisfied or very dissatisfied. And it turns out it, it seems to be based on where you live whether your cable wires are above ground or below ground. And the problem that they're having with internet service is that charter is just not responsive because they don't have to be. They have a monopoly in this town and in every other town in Massachusetts. Why is that? It's because the, the laws that were written that allow cable to exist in Massachusetts were written 40 years ago. And technology has certainly changed a little bit in 40 years, but the laws have. So the laws essentially inhibit uh, competition. Uh, the town has asked Verizon on a number of occasions to install BIOS in town, which is their fiber optic service, and Verizon has declined. Why? Because the, the cable companies have an unwritten rule of agreement that says, I'm not going to infringe on your territory. You don't infringe on my territory. So Upton is a charter town. And there are 60 other charter towns in the state of Massachusetts that are in the same situation. Uh, no competition means charter can charge everything. <laughs> and they provide whatever level of service, good or bad, that they want. And there's no repercussions. There's no, the town and the, and the customers have no leverage to get any satisfaction. In fact, our charter's license to provide cable TV in Upton expired a year ago. Uh, and they're still providing, they're still providing cable TV service, again, because the laws in the state allow it to happen. Um, we, <coughs> we held a public hearing like we were supposed to. Charter didn't show up. We tried to get them to negotiate a new cable, a new license agreement. They're, they're just not interested. It's, it's a pain for them. Um, and, you know, this, in my opinion, um, the only way we can fix this is if our state representatives hear from panels like Upton about the problems that consumers are having in dealing with companies like Charter and change the laws. So back in January, I, I sent you a draft of a letter that I was hoping you would consider sending to our state representatives, telling them, explaining what the problem is, and saying, look, we will work with you, we'll help you uh, do whatever we can to, to get the laws changed so that towns like Upton can get competition and and you know other companies can come in and provide uh internet service because you know nobody the, the trend is that cable tv is going down consumers are finding that cable tv from companies like charter and comcast mm -hmm. too expensive. they can get exactly what they want from streaming services um and so there are a lot of people in town don't have cable TV, but they have internet from Charter. Um, so, the, the, you know, companies like Charter, you know, they are 
they're reading their writing on the wall and they're very uh, concerned that eventually something is going to replace replace them. So the only way they can survive is if they become more competitive. And under the current laws, that isn't going to happen. So the reason I'm sharing this with you is to urge you to consider sending this letter to our state representatives to get them to be aware of this problem and hopefully try to address it. Okay. Have you read the letter? Uh, I have. Yeah. I have a copy here if you would like. It. Yeah, but I would. I have it here. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I was going to say it. I do remember seeing it several months back. Um, I did have one or two quick questions for you. I'll try not to, you don't have to get into any great detail. You mentioned the school. I'm assuming that would be uh, an IT service or an IT professional that they would hire on their staff. Right. And then we would share them. share some of those services, X number of hours <laughs> right. for people aware of the situation. So the, the IT director at the, at the high school currently has a staff of about six. And, and then we go from six to seven. Is that and we go from, yeah. And the person that he's adding would primarily work at Memorial School because their um, what he told us was they're rolling out a program to drastically increase the number of iPads they have in the Memorial School. So his job would be or her job, whoever it is, their job would be to support that. Um, and he's willing to share that person with the town which is great for us because it gives us access to not only that person, but the resources of the team at the, the other six. If there's a problem that's you know above this person's pay grade that they can't resolve. So we've been, I, I've been extremely impressed uh, in working with Joe. His name is Joe Lusso. He's the IT director. He's been extremely cooperative and um, comes here whenever we ask him to, to meet. <laughs> and, um, he's given us a lot of great ideas. Uh, a lot of the information that we put in the uh, grant application for the fiber uh, came from him because he's done the same thing. All the schools are connected by a private fiber network. So he's been extremely uh, helpful in, in getting us good information. So I, I think this is going to work out great for both parties. And then you mentioned next year's budget. That would then eliminate the need for the memorandum of understanding and no, so you know. so what what so the person we're looking to have here is an entry level person who would be what's called a help desk person. So you know you come into work one day and I can't log into my computer, who do you call? Now you call Kelly, right? Um, so we're hoping that uh, this person can relieve a lot of the problems that Kelly gets on that um, and uh, address them. Um, but this is an entry level person. What what we're going to be asking for next year is a senior person who is more of a big picture person uh, and can address some of the larger picture issues that the town has. How often should we be replacing our laptops? You know, when do we have to replace the server? We have a an article on the warrant to replace the town server because it's eight years old. Um, so we need we need someone who's thinking about those things because that's their job. Um, uh, and, and can hopefully, like I said, prevent a bad thing from happening, which would be devastating to the town if it did happen. Yeah, just a couple of questions. So the person that we would be sharing with MURSD, is there any cost to that? Yes, we'd be paying half their salary and benefits. Which is how much? We don't know yet because we haven't hired them. We, ha we have it in the budget at um, $35,000. That's what estimated $70,000 for that employee, plus that our, our level of, I think it was $55,000 in benefits. Okay, and so that's providing a service that we Right, because we have somebody now. You said you're not renewing a contract, so we're going to pay for that contract now. So, like, we're going from something to there's so right now, contract is 60k. I'm sorry, is 60k with retrofit? Yeah, retrofit is about $60,000 a year, 
Our contract is up as of June 30th, and they indicated to me that it would go to at least $130,000 a year. It was going to more than double in price. For the same service? For the same service. So, um, we're not doing that. And, and, and we've had, um, not, we've had situations with them. So, yep. um, so we came up with this to Steve's point, and I really would like to recognize Steve and the technology committee. They've really been very helpful to me. Um, so to Steve's point, we explored sharing the resources with Menden Upton Regional School. Their IT director, Joe Lakeu, is willing to work with us and hire that employee. Um, how much would the network monitoring cost in addition to the $35,000? we are we are in the process of still gathering quotes on that. I yeah. have a quote from our current vendor. Yeah. It's a little, it's higher than <laughs> what I put in the budget. Yeah. So, um, and it's also a la carte that we can probably take out. Yeah. There's also. Um, what well, is the amount? The amount I think was fifty thousand dollars for the year, and I estimate and I um, budgeted forty thousand. Okay. And, and then. The, and the, then um, there's also another computer company, um, Wally Computers, out of Western Mass, that Menden Upton School District works with, yeah. and we're waiting to get a quote from them what we're looking for. Gotcha. And then the third component of support was this 24-7 support. Which sounds like so that's, in addition to network monitoring. Yeah, so the network sure. monitoring thing would be a fixed contract for a fixed amount for a year. So is that the 50,000 or is that something different? It's that's probably that's the 40,000. Yeah, the 50,000 from our current mm -hmm. vendor was what they gave us, 50,000. Then I hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm just trying to wrap my head up. Yeah. So right now we're paying sixty thousand dollars a year for IT support. Yep. Okay. To our vendor. We're talking about going from one solution to a combination of three solutions. One is the MURSD shared resource. Correct. Two is network monitoring. Right. Correct. Three is a twenty four seven support person. No, so the, 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 th the third part is uh, off hours uh, support on just on the weekend. Okay, so the third part is off hours. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so how much are I'm trying to figure out how much we're spending now and how much we're going to spend with this. So the, off, new the off hours thing, the way we're going to approach that is we're going to do a per, per event uh, cost because we don't we don't have very many of those ever happen. But we do need to have a, an insurance policy in place if it does. So the same company that we're going to look at for the network monitoring could provide the off hours support on a per event Has basis, to basis, you know, hourly basis. Should we need that? So we, we can't say how much that would cost us. You only pay for it when you when you have an event that needs to be addressed and past history, we, we don't. Okay, so we're going from sixty thousand a year to eighty thousand a year, recognizing that that was sort of the sixty thousand was last year, and that they're now going to increase to one hundred thirty. So I, mean, I, I totally get that. So we, we're we're looking saving at, money versus book. It's what still, we doing before right, we renew the contract. Right. So I, I get that. And then next year we want to hire a senior technical person that would clearly come in with a salary of much greater than $70,000 a year, because the $70,000 a year is for the entry level person. But we don't know. I mean, like I said, we have to, you would have to- Well, but that seems pretty obvious, right? What have a junior but, level person? Yeah. 70, but we, senior person would be more than 70. Right, but we, okay. we, could, we could initially ask for a part-time person. Um, so- Okay. All right, no, I'm just trying to get a sense of sort of what the next couple of years looks like in terms of what this is going to cost and how we're thinking about it. So um, that's yeah. very helpful. No, no, the, the, thing is, is, thank you. the thing is, is you know, because of the, the fact that the town runs on computers, um, this is not stuff that you can kick down the road. Um, this is stuff you have to be in. Like I said, just one, one ransomware event could put the town out of commission. Considerable. We're protected from a ransomware attack currently, I would think, with the technology that we have. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right now, our vendor is protecting us, and we also have um, ins you know, insurance, God forbid, anything should happen. And we have a cloud backup service. So I would imagine, you know, I would, I know we've heard the nightmares of, of 21 days, but God forbid.
working with that something was to happen. Hopefully, a um, vendor could get a uh, backup system um, installed pretty quickly. Okay, and we wouldn't expect any gap in that support or increased risk. Correct. Right. Yeah, we're not we're, we're not going to shut if, if we're not going to even though the contract's up June June thirtieth, we will have a contingency plan in place. God forbid yeah. we don't have all the other parts in place, yes. we will never be unprotected because okay. it's it's yeah. imperative that we're not. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Steve. Yeah. Thank you. And ultimately, we would want to just kind of monitor is as we incrementally spend more, is it cheaper to keep the service in house or is it more cost effective to just spend a little more on those three different levels That's and right. try to accomplish the same thing? But the key thing is, as you both mentioned, is that we are protected now mm -hmm. and we have the cloud back. So we're not vulnerable as of yet. But the thing is, the the threats that are that are out there are evolving on a daily basis. So even though we are protected against what you know, you can't be one hundred percent sure that you're protected against things that you don't know. Because uh, you can't do that. So right. um, we can only do the best we can. So that's what we're trying to do. Thank, thank you so much. much. You're good. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, well, point two, <clears throat> we have the town planner update, Paul. Uh, good evening. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, greetings to the assembled dignitaries in the room tonight. Uh, I know we have a lot on the agenda, but I just want to hit on a couple points before we get to our guest presentation. Uh, as we know, housing has been a big issue in town uh, in recent weeks, recent months. Um, I'll be, I have a feeling I'll be coming to speak with you more frequently as we deal with our 40B issues and our housing production plan gets underway in the near future. Uh, but tonight we're here to talk about the new state requirement uh, regarding uh, MBTA communities and the requirement to add multifamily uh, zoning districts by right. Uh, so uh, there was sort of a, that that law sort of came out of, out of the blue at us a little bit and a lot of towns are scrambling to see what to do about it. Uh, so fortunately, we were able to apply through CMRPC to get some technical assistance uh, to help us through that process uh, and then ultimately end up with creating a bylaw that meets the state requirements. But before we get into all that, uh, there's a way that over the next year the town can comply with the new requirements. And I think now would be a good time for me to turn it over to uh, Gabe Trevor and Nina Weisblatt from CMRPC, uh, who will have, have a a brief PowerPoint to go over, and I'm sure we'll be able to try to answer questions for you uh, at the end of that. Hi, thank you, Paul, and uh, thank you to the Board of Selectmen for having me uh, and my colleague Nina. Um, yeah, so I have a brief presentation. Um, I'm going to try to keep it uh, under 10 minutes, um, and then I guess, yeah, like Paul said, if, I guess um, we, we probably should just take maybe take questions at the end so we can get through the presentation. Um, just because it's, you know, there's a lot of information and I think a lot of your questions will end up being answered through the course of the presentation, I hope. So I'm going to try to screen share. Um, give me one second. Uh, oops, OK. I have to change a setting, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, Paul, do you want to try sharing it? I might have an issue. Maybe you can see it on the screen. Can you not see it? Is it sharing me? Yes, we can. We can, yes. we can see yep. the screen. Yep. OK, so you can see me. That's good. All right, so I won't bother with it right now. Let me know if there's an issue. Oh, sorry. That was me. We're good? Yeah. OK, so yep. um, yeah, like I said, I'm a my name is Gabe Trevor. I'm an assistant planner um, at CMRPC. Um, I do work there on um, land use and zoning issues. Um, not so much housing, but um, you know we do have staff people on staff who work on housing. Um, and you know I'm hoping to help out with your uh, you know with housing production plans and that sort of thing, um, and help you guys through this process. So we're going to talk about um, you know, this is all about compliance under chapter of uh, under section uh, 3A of the Zoning Act. That's you know why we're here. Um, so, for some background, um, as you probably are aware, Massachusetts has some of the highest and fastest growing home prices and rents in the United States. 
the state has a shortage of an estimated 200,000 housing units. Low and middle income households, such as young families, workers, and seniors, faced increased financial pressure from housing costs. A lack of housing production is an impediment to community development and a competitive disadvantage to our economy and job growth. Um, and municipalities play a key role through zoning and permitting in determining what, uh, whether housing gets constructed. And so um, just for some background on Section 3A, um, House Bill 5250 um, was passed in December of 2020 and signed by Governor Baker um, in January of last year. Um, there are a bunch of housing provisions in the bill, including lowering the threshold for town meeting votes for certain uh, housing related zoning provisions. Additionally, Section 18 of the Economic Development Bill included Section 3A, um, which encourages designated MBTA communities to adopt zoning districts where multifamily zoning is permitted by right. Um, and then has to meet other requirements set forth in the statute. And so, um, as you can see on this map, um, there are 175 municipalities subject to this new law. Um, relevant to you know central Massachusetts, we're looking at uh, commuter rail communities and MBTA adjacent communities. So on the map, as you can see in dark green, um, a commuter rail community has a commuter rail station within its borders or within 0.5 miles of the border of the town, while an MBTA, MBTA adjacent community in light green, um, as you can see, Upton is one of those, um, a butts or rapid transit community, bus service community, or commuter rail community. And so there are different rules for different communities, which I'll get to. And so uh, basically, for, for this, uh, to, to abide by this legislation, um, the town is required to create a district where multifamily housing is allowed by right at a minimum de density of 15 units per acre. Uh, the district must contain at least 50 acres of land. Overlay districts are okay, but one part of the district must contain at least 25 contiguous acres and no part can contain less than five contiguous acres of land. Um, so that means, you know, you have to have, you know, you have to have 25 acres together in at least one section and you can't, you know, you can't have these little parts that are less than five acres. So you could have it dispersed, but it, you, know, you have to maintain a certain degree of uh, quantity of, of size of the land. Site plan approval may be required, but it cannot be used to deny a project or impose conditions that make a project infeasible or impractical to build. And, um, you know, for the, for the select board and for, for any community members watching, uh, we just wanted to give some examples of what 15 units per acre can look like. Um, as you can see, you know, it, it can involve a variety of different housing types. Um, you could have townhomes, uh, carriage houses, you could have um, this suburban loft and garden flat, um, or basically, you know, you could have duplexes, um, carriage houses. There's a lot of different, you know, forms that this housing could take to, to satisfy 15 units an acre. We're not necessarily just talking about apartment blocks. Um, and there are some examples of housing uh, in other towns in Massachusetts, like Westwood, Norfolk, Sudbury, and Lexington. Um, as you can see, you know, you can you can make this housing fit, you know, the aesthetic characteristics of, of a small town. Um, it just will have, you know, a higher density. But it's, you know, there, there's ways to make it look and fit into the existing community uh, desires. So de determining reasonable size. Um, the district's uh, multifamily capacity must be equal to or greater than 10% of Upton's total housing stock. And so this number is uh, drawn from the 2020 uh, census data. And so uh, in, in 2020, uh, Upton had uh, 2,995 units. And so that district um, at a minimum would require 299 multifamily units. Um, on top of that, so, so if, if your housing number exceeded that, Basically, the minimum that that this will have to generate is 750 multifamily units um, at 50 acres with 15 units per acre. Um, so that's sort of the if one you know whichever number is higher, that would be the minimum. Um, existing multifamily units, for example, those in West Upton, located within the district's boundaries, can count towards both units and density count. When communities uh, estimate how many units could be constructed on each parcel of developable of developable land within the district. The estimate should consider the amount of developable developable land 
height limitations, lot coverage limitations, maximum floor area ratio, setbacks, parking space requirements, and any other restrictions or limitations in other bylaws. So, you know, it's pretty clear, but you have to, you know, incorporate any, any other zoning provisions you're going to include for the multifamily housing. And so, like I said, there's different rules for different types of MBTA communities. Um, since you have no land uh, within 0.5 miles of a transit station, but you abut several, uh, you know, communities with transit, um, the definition in the in the law, and honestly, this is this gets a little vague, and this might you know end up being subject to some changes over time. But you know, they they basically they have they have guidelines. They say that the multifamily district should be in an area area with reasonable access to to a transit station based on existing street patterns, pedestrian connections, and bicycle lanes, or in an area that otherwise is consistent with Massachusetts sustainable development principles. And so obviously Upton, um, you know, if you look at the map, there, it's not like you can walk down the street to a transit station, but, um, you know, looking at the town and speaking with Paul, you know, uh, I think, you know, if you look at that Route 140 corridor um, in, the up, in Upton Center or the western part of Upton, that could be an area that could qualify. Um, but and then also, you know, if there's if there's a location with underutilized facilities that could be redeveloped into new multifamily housing, that would also, you know, comply with the sustainable sustainable development principle. So if you have mill buildings, um, you know, school, you know, you know, uh, unused school, you know, school or municipal buildings, things of that nature, um, that could be rehabbed. Uh, that could also qualify the sustainable development principles. And then on top of that, the multifamily district zoning cannot include units with age restrictions and cannot place and limits and or restrictions on the size of units, the number of bedrooms in the unit, um, the size of bedrooms, or the number of occupants. And so, you know, this as we as we talked about, you know, a lot of the housing barriers in the state are for young people, families, workers. So we want to make sure, you know, the state wants to make sure that, you know, these are included, you know, inclusive to those those uh, groups in need. So it's also important to understand that these draft guidelines are not a production mandate, a requirement to build new units or a production target. There is no requirement or expectation that a multifamily district will be built out to its full capacity. Um, and so this has, you know, obviously been a, a key concern when this has come up. Um, you know, there's this, it's, you know, the state isn't going to force you to build uh, to this density. They just want to make sure that, you know, this is an option that's available in these communities that are adjacent to to, to public transit. And then um, this is you know related to chapter 40B, which allows developers to bypass local zoning in communities with less than 10% affordable housing. So, you know, it's a it's a different rule from from how chapter 40B works. We're really just talking about changing the underlying zoning. Um, so there are some consequences as if Upton or any other community doesn't comply with the new legislation. Communities that do, do not meet compliance deadlines will not be eligible to apply for funds from uh, certain state programs, including MassWorks Housing Infrastructure Program, Housing Choice Initiative, Local Capital Projects Fund. And then on top of that, DHCD may at its discretion take non-compliance into consideration when making other discretionary grant awards. So, you know, CMRPC doesn't want uh, any of our towns to miss out on these grant opportunities, um, you know, by, because of non-compliance. Um, so there is a compliance timeline, um, but you know, it is a pretty, it is a pretty long timeline. Um, it, you do have a couple years to, you know, for overall compliance. The first deadline, um, is the deadline for public comments on the draft guidelines. The second deadline is on May 2nd, um, which is to hold a briefing with the select board, which you fulfilled today. Um, and then submit a community information board, and I'll be working with your uh, or community information form, and I'll be working with with Paul, your planner, to make sure that that gets submitted. At the end of the year, uh, December thirty first, there's a deadline for interim compliance, and so uh, the town will need to notify DHCD um, if there are no existing multifamily districts that fully comply with the guidelines already. So if you had an existing uh, if you had an existing compliant district, which you know, not a lot of towns do, but some do, that would be the time you could submit that. Um, and then in July 1st of next year, 
um, you're going to need to you're going to need to submit a DHCD approval of action plan, and so basically the town will submit their own plan um, with a compliance timeline. Um, that then by the end of 2023, December 31st, um, you will you should have adopted a new the new zoning bylaws that meet these requirements. And then March 31st of 2024, um, there's an application to determine compliance. So as you can see, you know this is a pretty it is a it is a you know in the grand scheme of things, it's not that long a timeline, but you know, there is there is some time with an active, you know, select board and planning board and, a, you know, a town planner, I think. And, you know, with CMRPC's assistance, of course, I think it's pretty reasonable, um, you know, for a town like Upton to uh, to comply with this in time. So, you know, there there is a there is time to, you know, do public comment and, you know, have a have a full process to implement this zoning. And so in the in the uh, in the presentation, um, which, uh, you know, I, I hope is shared with the with the select board and. I hope you guys give it a look after the after the meeting as well. Um, there are some uh, resources that we highlighted. Um, there's a housing toolbox because um, you know a lot of communities have the same questions. Just to go over um, you know these MD, MBTA zoning uh, you know zoning requirements, frequently asked questions, uh, steps you can take while guidelines are being finalized. So like I said, some things are subject to change. I, I believe. Um, Especially, you know, you know, we're, when we're when when they're talking about determining if they comply with the sustainable development, uh, you know, that that's kind of that's not super well defined right now. Um, and they're, you know, they're, they have, you know, had this public comment sec time, so I think, you know, things things may, you know, come to change, but there's things you can do before those changes come in. Um, there was a MBTA community zoning webinar in January, um, and the video should be online. There will be mapping tools um, to help. Uh, you know, you figure out if your zoning districts will meet state guidelines. And then Mass Housing Partnership is doing a project to map every parcel in Mass and all existing housing densities on every parcel um, so that, you know, a town can, you know, align their new districts with existing density and development patterns. So you're not, you know, sticking somewhere, something where, it, you know, it shouldn't be or that people would be upset if you put it there. Um, and then, you know, you can get technical assistance. Um, Mass Housing Partnership is a great resource. Um, we reach out to them when we have questions. Um, and so they, they have their own toolboxes and their own staff dedicated to this. Um, additionally, CMRPC, we've gotten a district local technical assistance grant for 2020 to help designated MBTA communities um, meet their compliance. And so um, I have my contact info at the end, but you can reach out to myself or anyone at CMRPC. Um, you know, if you if you have any more questions, there's an EEA planning assistance grant program up to fifty thousand for proposal to implement land use regu regulations consistent with land conservation and development objectives and provision of sufficient and diverse housing. And then finally, the fiscal year twenty three community one stop for growth. Um, you know, there's all sorts of programs like housing choice, community planning grants, um, and the rural and small town development fund that MBTA communities can of course apply for. And so now um, we'll take questions. Again, my name is Gabe Trevor. Um, you can reach me at gtrevor at cmrpc.org. And of course, Paul, um, you know him. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if there's any town specific questions, uh, he probably would know better than me. <laughs> but yeah, um, any questions? No? Yes. Yes. Questions? My name is Ali Union, 45 School. I do have a question. Okay. Well, uh, the problem yeah. is the question but may not be too clear. Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I did. I did have a question. Uh, this may be par partially a question for you, Gabe, and partially mm -hmm. Paul. So, Gabe, approximately right now, how many communities in Mass or within the uh, MBTA communities have reached the thresholds necessary? And then, I guess the question for you, Paul, would be. Um, Roughly, and I, I understand that a lot of planning hasn't been done to look towards this, but uh, you know, how close are we from a, a land use? You know, that 50 acre seems like a pretty large number. You know, how close are we to meeting these thresholds that we need to meet? Well, Gabe, maybe uh, do you have knowledge on the um, compliant communities? 
I do not. Um, okay. Again, it's. I think you know we'll probably know sometime next year. I'm sure there will be a report put together once that uh, December uh, 2022 deadline is reached. Uh, Nina, because Nina's, you, you do you have you heard anything about? Because Nina's done other presentations on this. Have you heard anything about compliance? Like how many communities are in compliance? Uh, not yet. I think that, as you said, there's going to be a report that'll come out next year. Um, yeah. With some sort of knowledge, but yeah, not. But not again, really in, it's 175 communities. I think um, you know there are communities closer to Boston that are. I you know I remember. I'm sure there are communities closer to Boston that are in compliance at this point. Um, but for in terms of communities in our region, I in our region I can't think of any that are in compliance. Um, every town you know is going to have to do something. Um, yeah, Paul, if you want to take the other question. Yeah, sure. Uh, on the second point, uh, just uh, just I think the best way is an illustration where the short answer is we're not very close. Uh, we don't have a lot of multifamily housing uh, really existing in Upton. But just as an illustration, just taking, you know, I think folks are familiar with 149 Main and of course people are familiar with the Hat Factory. Um, you know, looking at that, I think that that's ballpark 130 something units on about eight or nine acres. So in terms of uh, in terms of density, that's kind of what it looks like. Uh, in terms of size, that's about uh, a fifth. That gets us about 20% of the way towards the 50 acres. So I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but if we are sensitive to where we have existing multifamily development, we'll still have to identify some other areas. Uh, but it does, as Gabe alluded to in the presentation, uh, given the existing uh, development pattern in West Upton and to an extent in Upton Town Center where we have our, you know, our downtown uh, business zoning, there's some opportunities there. Uh, but 50 acres is quite a bit of land, especially when we need to keep it focused along the 140 corridor. I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, yes, yes it does, thank you. So if we took out the town on land, what does that leave us with what we have to do to be in compliance? Yeah, that's part of what this analysis will help us figure out when we get to that point. Uh, I started to get, I've asked uh, uh, the assessor's office some data on uh, multifamily units so we can begin backing into what we actually have in hand, so to speak. Uh, and then we can start to identify, like you said, town owned land, perhaps that can be dedicated towards this kind of use. Or, uh, you know, we have some other projects potentially coming down the line, you know, with town center parcels potentially, where we could have additional multifamily development. So I think we're going to long, you know, I don't have it identified yet, and I'm not steering us in a direction, but I have a feeling we're going to have an overlay district with multiple different pockets in different parts of town. Um, that will help us get to that threshold. Also, the state-owned land wouldn't be included in that either. Right? No, correct. That was actually, you know, not to get into the weeds on this one, but uh, you know, just doing a Google uh, map search. If we left Town Hall, I think it's nine miles by road to get to the Westboro uh, T station, the you know the, the commuter rail station. So, in the closest area to Westboro is basically Upton State Forest. Obviously, we're not going to be able to develop Upton, Upton State Forest, um, so that's part of where this this regulation kind of uh, is putting a you know it's not very nuanced right now. So we're going to have to get creative with how we end up complying with it. So just a, a, a quick question, Paul. This one's for you. Um, presumably, adherence to this regulation would be included in the updated housing production plan? Uh, well, as it turns out, you know, we will be working. We haven't fully signed the contract yet, but we will be working with CMRPC to do our housing production plan. And since they'll be assisting us as well with uh, compliance with this uh, new state regulation, I have no doubt we'll be kind of uh, that was part of my goal here. It's almost like, you know, it was planned that way uh -huh. <laughs> um, that we could actually begin to you know tackle some of these issues concurrently. So we're not taking a piecemeal approach. We can kind of deal with it all at one time. Yeah, that, that's great. And I'll, um, I'm guessing that you could have housing that would both potentially meet 40B regulations as well as meet 
the capacity or count towards this regulation as well? Yeah, absolutely. As as Gabe sort of outlined, 40B, you know, these are all interrelated issues, but this 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 reg this regulation that we're gonna have to adhere to does not require us to produce any housing. But certainly if we produced any uh multifamily housing that was designated as affordable, uh it would count to our 40B uh threshold. Yeah. So, you know, if we're getting way ahead of things here, uh we could multi we could potentially gain compliance with this multifamily zoning requirement. But if we're able to identify the right location, we could potentially cultivate a friendly 40B project that would actually help us also get to the 40B th uh, threshold of 10%. Uh, that's getting way ahead, but um, I think it would make sense to direct any future 40B affordable housing to these multifamily zones that we're gonna end up creating. Great, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Gabe. Yeah. I think. Uh, Thank you. To the, to the chair, there was there a question from the from the public. Yeah. That we, yeah. Is that person still? Yes, it was well, me, but it has been covered. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I'd say feel free to reach out to me and, and or Gabe going forward. But as I indicated, I think we'll be talking quite a bit about housing issues mm -hmm. over the next few months. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gabe and Nina. Um, five point one on the agenda: motion to execute the annual town election warrant. Questions. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody speaking to this? <laughs> well, I prepared it. We need to have a warrant in order to have the election. So I kind of figured you guys need to sign it. So if you could, I would appreciate it. All right. If we have a motion. Sure. Uh, make the motion that we approve the annual town election warrant. I would second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous action. Still trying to remember if we need to do roll call. We don't have to do roll call. Right? Yeah. Five point two. We're passing over. Correct, Mr. Westgate. We're not ready. Yes, Madam Chair. Please. Okay. Five point three is the men's club request for funding for the town traffic island plan. Hi, good evening, dignitaries. I hear that like today, that. so I'm very impressive. Are you talking about you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, not talking about me. Um, no, it, again, it's our annual little bid for uh, trying to get some, uh, get you guys in line with what we want to do for plantings this year. I mean, we've done a lot of stuff in grocery. We moved a lot of the plants down in Duncan, along Duncan and Hartford, and took that over to Kiwanis, the handicap ramp. Um, we've been working really well with the DPW on, on securing. Soils. They provided the box mulch for the uh, Kiwanis yeah, handicap ramp. Uh, I think we've done really well, you know, working inside the town and trying to keep the the uh, the cost at a minimal. Uh, again, but we I just we want to make sure that we're not, you know, taking liberties. This will be this will be once a year. Command and trying to you guys approval to um, get some money out of that duplication. So we're not sure about down by Duncan Donuts and Hartford Street. It doesn't look like they're quite completed. I wasn't, I'm, I'm not aware if they're going to put in the parkway in. So it kind of, I, I'm going to work with the DPW. Unless you guys tell me there's somebody I should be talking to. Right now. So, no? i give you a hint. He's in this room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, sir. I don't know you. Okay, yes, that's a mistake. The DPW director. Okay, you work with uh, Dave O'Brien from our club. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So, you guys do a great job. Thank we you. really appreciate it. No, nope. and you're absolutely correct. I would hold off in that particular section. It's the last part of the sidewalks that they have to do, and there's a lot of work to be done there, including including a lit crosswalk okay. um, to take you from Coach Road Apartments over to the little mini marts. Okay. So there's an awful lot of work. They're going to realign that roadway and that intersection. Yeah, it looked like they was sold off from planting. Right. So with that being said, we've done some work down in uh, Grove Street. Right, it men that uh, island there, and the guys expressed an interest. They wanted to take care of some um, 
possibly doing a similar type planting at North Street and Westbar Road. Mm -hmm. um, as usual, we will take as um, mindful care of there appears to be a, a memorial for a, a military or a something there. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't stop to take a look at it. I just noticed it's not there. Um, but we're thinking about doing a little more there. And, and you know, we're, we're kind of like the grocery thing, left enough room for the bottling to be done without damaging anything. Did a great job. job. Thank you. Yeah, that looks great. Thank you. Like there was uh, really Mr. Campbell's brainchild to do that. So I wasn't willing to take on much more work. He had to push me pretty hard. Mm -hmm. um, the bottom of Prospect Street as well. I yeah. noticed, uh, I think I've seen Mr. Campbell there. Oh, yeah. The bottom of Prospect Street looks really nice as yeah. well. So that a bunch of different intersections uh, that mm -hmm. you gentlemen take care of. So. Yeah, and we've been adding as we go to the portfolio. And, and now we're <laughs> taking over the planters for the Bloomer Girls. So we have that that cost for the plants and stuff like that. And, um, so with that all being said, I, I, I'm going to look to Sandy. I, I think we've been doing pretty good with the bills, bringing them in, you know, from the, the landscape. But I want to know what you really want to prefer, because we kind of mucked it up a little bit. It was, it was really hard um, sometimes because a lot of the contractors were new. I wasn't getting W9, W9. So some of you were paying, some I was yeah. paying. I would prefer to give the men's club, give me all the receipts of the men's club directly. I pay the men's club directly and you can disperse. Sure. We're not looking to make anyone's job hot. So that, you know, right. I mean, but that's, sure. right. it's just the W, like, you know, some people weren't giving me W9s. I couldn't pay them. Yeah, yeah. But so you paid them, but I didn't know you paid them. I'm still asking for W9. Right. So I prefer to give you a stack of bills. All right. I uh, will, you know, request a. We can do that. Check. Yep. That would be great. Okay. Appreciate that, it. That's fine. I, we, that's why we're here. <laughs> Talk about it. our follies last year and, and, you know, try and get it all straightened out and make it easy for everybody. Thank you. Um, other than that, I mean, so with, with the uptick of a couple islands and the seven welcome to up in signs and, you know, various additional islands we're going to be looking at, I don't want to seem like we're, we're I don't want to come have to come back here for all you guys on the dignitaries are very busy. Uh, but I do want to just make sure I cover myself, and I don't expect to spend this five thousand dollars that I'm requesting to have in like a pool. But I, I like to, so it, it prevents us from having to come back, you know. And if we see something that you know is going to be like a, a two thousand dollar bill, uh, we'll get mulch, we get boom, we're, we're doing everything we can in time to time to keep the cost down while well, I. I think our history proves that. So mm -hmm. I, mean, I just don't want to, you know, bother you guys with mm -hmm. another five hundred dollars that we needed or something like that. You know, but then on the other end, we've gotten about three thousand dollars, including the, the five plants. You know, and, and the, the club's really talked about, you know, popping our game a little bit and putting bulbs in, and trying to get some better perennial plants put in there, and also putting in some annuals to kind of boost the place up a little bit that would, you know, have an impact. So. That would be the request that I'm putting in front of you guys is, is not to exceed five thousand dollars out of this unification one. But I don't expect this right now. I mean, I just again, if you guys don't feel if you feel that's too much, then you know we just I mean we really need three thousand dollars in my mind. I just don't want to have to come back. It would be great if at the end of the year we tally it up and see and say that we spent thirty two hundred bucks, you know, we can spend five. And I think it's good that we come in front of you guys. Once a year to you know make sure and fix yeah. building problems and talk about mm -hmm. what we're doing. We're always glad to see you, whether it's once a year or twice a year. Yeah. If you come in for three, you need yeah. to come back for another twelve or whatever the numbers. You can always do that. But yeah. it's uh, I'm good either way. If you want to, yeah. if you want to, uh, I think usually we motion it up to, but not to exceed <laughs> up to that number. Yes, yeah. I'm okay. Are you guys okay? I'm okay. Yeah. 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 So I make a motion that we approve uh, to five thousand dollars of expenditures uh, through the pristine beautification fund for use by the Upton Men's Club for the purposes of, of beautification of the town and plantings that they have done historically. No, and Red I, I, I will second the motion. Stephen Matelli and I. Maureen Quinelli, unanimous action. Thank you. Thank you. Through the chair, I actually would like, like to make one content. Comment there. Somebody has done a lot of really nice work at the monument at North Street and West Grove Road. I don't know who it is. North Street and West Grove. That's the one. We were just talking about. 
Westboro Road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They keep they keep the area around the mine very nice from landscape. They change it according to season. I mean, they've done just a wonderful job. I just to the extent. I'm a little confused on where that island is. Where you stand, you haven't visited, yeah, but yeah. there's a memorial. Yeah, the, the North Street Grass, isn't it? No, well, there's a memorial, and somebody has been doing a wonderful job keeping the area around the memorial. Okay. And, I, and, I, and I think you guys can, I just would hope that somebody could figure out who it was and let her know that you were going to her, her or him know that we were going to do the work and if we'll figure it out. Just thank you for the rest of us because she, she, she or he has done just a wonderful job. Okay, well, I want to hopefully use the public forum. Hello, we'll thank you North Street, help us out. And uh, I will go knock on the neighbor's door in that local area and see if we can just figure out if it's a neighbor. Because generally, the, the biggest thing about this whole process is water. And if we can, you can beautify anything you want, but get in the water. Yeah, you can but if someone's taking care of that, your job just got a little easier. Yeah, and uh, uh, but we'll, we'll take on that, and uh, I will. I will check with those houses in a little. There's not many houses right now. Um, yeah, that I, I think it. I know who it might be. Um, I can check on that and find out about them. I appreciate that. I just, I just whoever it is, has just done a wonderful job over the years. Yes, great. Um, and I just want to make sure that uh, I think his work is not lost in all of this. Understood. No, no, we, we, we're trying to be respectful of everything in town, and I'll be honest, it's been a it's, been a long time since we've been doing this. And the first time I met with the state DBW, learning about sight lines and not walking traffic, you know, sight for traffic and making sure everything's clean and don't forget about the snow removal and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So it's been a really good learning experience and the, and the club likes to do it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Five point four motion to authorize library to spend up to eight hundred dollars from the Lorator Trust for uh fund to purchase books in FY22. Where's the best place for me to be? <laughs> take, take Mike's phone. <laughs> so hi for anyone that doesn't know me, I'm Matthew Baxold, I'm the library director, and the library is almost all the way back to our pre-pandemic services. There's a few things we're not doing like passport applications, but we're almost back to normal operations. So I am here to ask about one of our trust funds that we spend for library materials. And I don't think we used it last year because everything was so chaotic. But uh, this year and most years going forward, you'll probably see me asking to spend this. Um, so this trust fund was set up in 1972. There's a principal amount, which is non-expendable. And there's an interest amount which is expendable and it is required to be used for books for the library collection. The process we are following is I go to my library trustees and say, should I spend the interest? And they say, yes, go ask the selectmen. And I need a approval from the selectmen so that the town account will actually pay the bills from this trust fund. So we're asking for $800. Our interest this year was about 1200 so we're keeping a little bit aside to build up the um, amount going forward. Okay. Terrific. Thanks. Are there any questions? Okay. No. Any questions? Okay. Good. Thank you. Motion. I'll make a motion to authorize the library to spend up to eight hundred dollars from the Laura Dirt Trust Fund to, for the purchase of books in FY twenty two. Stephen Metelli and I. Let's sign the sign. Aye. And this action. Thank you very much. Well, there you go. All, all these items get a book plate in them. So if you ever check out a book, <clears throat> it's got a plate in the front that says Laura Dress Trust Fund. That's where it came. Ah, cool. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Put that up on the website somewhere, right? Cool. Interesting. Mm -hmm. We need a motion to accept the donation for the Council on the Aging. Janice, do you? Yeah. No, she doesn't want to speak to it. Janice, not? Okay. I can make the motion. Okay, do you need to recuse or not? Probably, I shouldn't vote on it. But. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I guess you better not. Probably not legally. No, no, you get there. Okay, so it's a Council of Aging gift, uh, just to embarrass you a little bit, that Brett has made 
um, for the purpose of the senior prom that's going to be held on April 22nd. So having said that, I make a motion to appropriate $250 to approve a donation of $250 gift from Brett Simons for the senior prom to be held on April 22nd. Excuse second me. that, Marie Winnell, I. Steve McCall, you that. Majority action. We also have a donation for parks and recreation. And that is. Lynn? No, Maria. Oh, Maria. We just met Maria the other day. <laughs> yes. You hear Maria? Maria, did you yeah. want to speak to Hi, this? Yes. How are you? Good evening. Good. Hi. Good evening. Um, yes, yeah, so we, I actually have never done this before. We are looking to uh, have a donation. Actually, Sandy, if you could help me out here. Um, what what do you all need in this? Accept. Ask, you're asking the Board of Selectmen to accept donations. Don Perfect. I am asking the Board of Selectmen to accept the donation. Um, I think I let, put a letter in of what is being donated. It's um, some kayaks and life vests and some other various equipment that is all listed there. I would. Great. I got it too. I make a motion that we accept a donation made by Lynn Mulhern of two kayaks, two kayak paddles, one croquet set, four life vests, and 20 various associated sporting balls. Stephen Mattelli and I. Uh, Brett Simus, I would just like to note that these are being gifted from Lynn Mulhern. Give me a second. Yes, I was second the motion with Brett Simon Sia. Marie Grinnell, I do not have the SARS and that action. You had a really great night. Thanks, Maria. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. 5.6 is a discussion on various appointments, which we have one CPC member to be appointed. Now, this is Brittany Bessler is asking to replace David Adams. Correct. On the CPC. Correct. Okay. Is it, and that's the only application that we can choose. That's correct. There's an open seat. Yes. It is. Yeah. Can we need to accept the resignation? I guess is the first. Yeah, did he resign? Question. Or is this? Um, he would have resigned. Did he resign, Kelly? Did he send in a letter of resignation? Um, what am I to say? I did not get a letter of resignation. I mean, he moved out of town, though, right? Yeah, yeah. he did move yeah. out. Yeah, I did get a letter. Interrupted. Yeah. Through. Yes. So. He did move out of town. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Would we have a motion to. Is Brittany here? I, I am. Here. Yes. Oh, it okay. is. Okay. Hi, uh, Brittany. Hello, I'm actually new to town. I tried to show up to town hall, but I couldn't find where you guys are located. So oh, I, uh, sorry. <laughs> I ran home and, and got on the camera and said, <laughs> sorry about that. About that. No, it's, it's reference, not your fault, it's, uh, it's mine. <laughs> for, for future reference, we're down on the lower level. So if you come in the main stairs, you kind of can go off to the left and go down a set of stairs and there's a conference room in the lower level of the town hall. Okay, good to know. I kept going upstairs, so I think that was <laughs> just yeah. to be tricky. Sometimes we're up there, but uh, yeah, one, of, <laughs> one of the two spots, right? Got you don't it. find us okay. down here all the way to the top. Sometimes we are there. Okay, good to know. <laughs> okay, want to just take a minute and introduce yourself, and um, we thank you for serving in town. But tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Yeah, I'm actually pretty new to town. I moved in in October, um, so. Uh, haven't met a ton of people yet, but I have. I joined the library book club to try to get to meet some people, and uh, that's where I met Raina, who, um, you know, said I could get involved in the town. And so, um, yeah. So I'm from. I'm. I'm actually originally from New Jersey. I lived in Weymouth for about five years and was uh, started to join um, the redevelopment authority down there, and so that kind of got me interested in in town meetings and things like that. And so I'm I'm interested in getting getting to know everybody more and getting to know the town activities. Great. Great. Do you have any questions? Uh, I do not. 
welcome to town. Thank you very much. For thank your you. Interest in yeah, Great. thank you. What's the term? Appoint. Appointed. So what's the amount of time, the duration? Oh, I, um, actually, it's really just till the end of the appointments and you'll reappoint her till the end of this year. So the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. The remainder of the term <laughs> until June 30th. 30th. June 30th. Okay. Make a motion that we appoint Brittany <clears throat> Messler to the Community Preservation Committee to serve out the remainder of the existing term, which ends June 30th. Brett Simus, aye. I would second the motion. Stephen Metellian, aye. Marie Winnell, aye. On this action. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for participating. Yes. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you. 5.7 Discussion on Crockett Road easement. Through the chair. Thank you. Um, so we have a resident who resides on Crockett Road. That has a failed septic system. It's an unusual situation. If you're familiar with Crockett Road, a lot of those homes are situated along the pond and they have very little square footage of property. This particular house happens to own land on the other side of the road, I should say. Crockett Road is a public way, belongs to the town. Um, they have applied for uh, a Title V system to put in across the road, but it would require a private entity being the homeowner crossing the public way. So the town would be required to provide an easement. Now, it gets a little more complicated. So I'll, I'll try to narrow it down for you. Um, there are other homes on this street that have already done this prior to my coming here as the public works director. And I did not know this until recently. And we do not have easements for them, which is it's a shame we should. This is not something that's totally unusual. Generally, when you see a situation like this, it requires uh, going across a private road. And then the town has no interest in it and they have no authority over it and such they have no liability. In this particular situation, you have to grant, instead of someone granting the town an easement, the town's actually granting someone an easement. So my discussions with K&B were very simple and they were very familiar with the situation and said, Upton is not uh, unique. This this happens in the Commonwealth, and, and there are ways to address it. And they help draft a policy, which would actually be for the Board of Health. So the Board of Health has the authority over the Title V, but for the Board of Health to be able to execute a Title V, the Board of Selectmen have to grant an easement by way of town meeting action, and then the DPW can grant a road. So speaking with K&P, the only hiccup that I, I found in this process was timing. This, if the, if the Board of Selectmen, and I'm gonna give this to you for some reading over the next week or before our next meeting, we can discuss it further. Um, if the Board of Selectmen des decides that it's in the best interest to provide an easement, which is my recommendation, we can only do it in the fall town meeting. And Kaufman and Page is not in a position to recommend that the board allow the person to go forward, not knowing what town meeting will do. For instance, if we put together paperwork that makes us feel comfortable that we have held the, um, the next person, the next owner of the property speak to the buyer to make sure that they follow through and we do in fact get in, be able to grant a, a legal easement, which holds them liable, uh, liable sorry, for maintaining the line in perpetuity. Um, if town meeting were to not have favorable action, there's really no way to back up from that. And that's what Complemental Page is trying to say. And I understand that. However, given the fact that several homes on this street already have it, and the fact that this individual has a failed septic that the Board of Health wants to be, <clears throat> wants to rectify as quickly as possible, I think it's in the best interest that we move forward. And my recommendation to the board is to give me permission to work with Kaufman and Page to draw something up in writing that would allow us to um, hold the next on it. I'm under the impression this individual is probably going to sell this house after the final fire is done. That's my impression. And so we want to be able to make sure that the next people who buy the house understand all of the circumstances around this, and then we can do the, um, the actual easement in the fall time. So that's what I'm looking for tonight. 
with his permission from the board to move forward. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yep. Is there anything you don't understand about it? I guess what I, I guess the one question I would have is if we're going to do that with this particular uh, easement and this particular property with the septic across the street, and there's one or two other properties that have the same issue, will we grant that easement? As it stands right now, do we have any ownership of those other lines? Would it be to our benefit to also incorporate those other properties and get all of them done legally correctly on easements so that they own those I would, lines? I would recommend, and that's a good question. I would recommend that after we secure this easement, we move forward to secure the other ones as well. We're not securing it, we're granting. And uh, before the end of the night, I'll pass out the policy that was put together uh, with the assistance of legal counsel so you can review it. It's lengthy. Right. And again, the Board of Health is aware of me being here tonight and discussing this with you. Again, this is a policy for the Board of Health, but it's complicated. It requires town meeting action. It requires action from you. And it requires a road opening permit from me and ultimately the Board of Health to grant the Title V. Are they comfortable with what's what your recommendation is with Crockett Road in this particular location? My, my conversation with Diane today I was under the impression that yeah, they want to see this get granted. Yeah, yeah, makes sense given that it's near water and right. currently failing. So okay, great. I wish we could wait till town meeting. I just don't think it's feasible. Well, and to hold somebody up from selling their home because this is right. Thank you. Right, but the way you're progressing, we still have to get a meeting. We have to get a vote at town meeting and we still have to do that. Yes. We will. Yeah. yeah. But this allows the homeowner to proceed with sort of solving the Title V problem so they can sell their house. So the next thing I'll present to the board will be something uh, you'll have the policy to review, but that's you know, that's for the, the long term goal. The short term goal is to provide you with some documentation that makes you feel comfortable that we can move forward and hold the next homeowners accountable for following through with this. Great. Nice that was great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. 5.8 motion to designate surplus to auction. BPW Ford Motor serial number 17175C-12-8C slash model 300 GFB dash 6001ER with a rock power takeoff serial number. A uh, five four four seven eight zero model PTA dash three one one five three C two one two dash seven two seven five A. Give the chair credit. I think you go through all that. I thought it was one of the items. No, I knew it was only one item. I'd like to go on record. I'm not going to reread that for the motion. Right. It's got to say. You should have waited. I should have done it. I shut up. You shut I almost said, I'm going to make a motion. So, through the chair, uh, the um, DPW Water Department has in its possession a, um, a used Ford inline, I think it's an inline, inline, inline six cylinder, cylinder engine with um, a power tape off, which is kind of a rudimentary transmission, if you will. And it was used many years ago in one of the wells to power the well. Technology has fixed that, so now we have actual pumps that are doing it, and we don't need a motor to actually run it and churn <laughs> it like we're making butter. <laughs> um, so this engine has been sitting inside and has very little hours on it. It's in pristine condition. Uh, Steve took a ride by to see it and checked it out. It was pretty neat. Curiosity, I had to. Absolutely. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, and so we finally needed the space and it was, we don't see any other use for it. Yeah. It's not really retro to fit anything else. Um, so we would see it as a, a benefit to auction. Any questions? Um, no, like I said, I went down to look at the other generator request as well. And while I was there, I took a look at this. It's uh, it's an interesting contraption. It's basically a, an enormous water pump. <laughs> with a with an inline gas six cylinder engine you know, that you'd find in a 1970s pickup truck or something like that. That's interesting. It's interesting. So, so folks listening at home, it'll be coming up for auction. It'd be a nice, you know, I guess, 
you wouldn't call it a lawn ornament. It'd be just something for your garage, for a man cave, ultimately. It'd be great for a man cave. <laughs> or a water pump, if you want to do it. Water pump, so. What about the community gardens? Couldn't they put something up down there to pump the water? Well, you would need a well. Our hope would be that we would be able to tie into our municipal business. We think we're working on things. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's, that, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Steve, you did have one, it has to be yours. I'm, I'll motion it, but I don't know if I'm no. going to be able to stay away from all those numbers. Oh. You know I'm a number guy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go I'll over. skip over some of it. All right. Okay. Uh, I make a motion that we designate surplus for the purpose to auction off Ford Motor Serial Number 17175C 12 HC Model 300 with a Rockford Power Takeoff Serial Number 544780. Model ETA, blah, 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 7275A. Stephen, but tell me or not. I second the motion. Brett Simons, aye. My range went in a lie, yet unanimous that way. Nicely done, people. 6.0. Do we have a town manager report or update? We do. Oh. A brief one. A brief one. Okay. Brief. I know. Um, so I just have a few items. That I'll hit that I think are probably things that are on the board's mind. We'll start with snow and ice. You missed one today, last night. Uh, some people did not, but we didn't get it. Um, my assistant Bill worked hard on numbers for me today to come up with a reconciliation of our snow and ice account, and we are ninety-four thousand six hundred twenty-nine dollars and fifty-one cents over our annual appropriation. So, as you know, we have an article on the town. I believe it is. Um, where we have earmarked 125,000 as long as we stay the course. Could you repeat that number, please? Absolutely. I'll give you a copy of this to see at the end. But uh, 94,629.51. Keep in mind, this still needs to be reconciled with our finance director. But internally, Bill is very trustworthy. <laughs> we stand behind that number. Yeah. <laughs> all reimbursements, I mean, all our expenditures, we've received all the bills. And we have received all the bills. Yes. Very good. Bill. Yeah. He's the best. <laughs> uh, chapter 90 update. I'm sure the board knows we received our annual notice um, that we have 314,650 committed to Upton. Uh, through our local delegates, it appears as though there are rumors on the horizon that we have a supplemental copy to the tune of 215,654 in addition. Now, we haven't received official notice yet, but I believe it's coming that will give us our annual appropriation. It'll bump it up from 314 to $530,304. Let's pay some ropes. Will that remain every year after? Supplementals are. Here, I've only seen a few in my lifetime. And that gets us close to where we would have been prior to the change we made last year, right? Between adding in and that that supplement. Yeah. And I'm, I'm getting ready to put the, the annual bid out for a three year extended contract. So it's Great. perfect timing. Great. Uh, I'm updating on the Grafton Upton Railroad. So my wastewater superintendent and I met with um, Michael Melanowski recently um, to revisit the, the wastewater line that goes, the interceptor that goes across the, yeah. um, the railroad yard. And um, the railroad still would like to move forward in putting some additional spurs in that location. If you recall, this, this, this um, conversation dead ended about two years ago, where we raised some concerns about the fact that the pipe is very old. It is a 15 inch clay line. Uh, with an easement granted to the town by the railroad, and we were concerned about its condition. So we hired Truax to come in and do uh, a video of the line, and it confirms some of our fears that the line has some ser serious sags in it. It also has some intrusions from old growth that was cut down years ago. The roots have still um, made their way into the line. Compromised. It's probably where some of our iron eyes is notorious for getting. Um, in our conversations with the railroad, they have suggested that they would be willing to talk with the town about fixing that line. If the town will partner with them 
and assist with the engineering, uh, the design of it, which I would prefer. Our, our folks did the designing anyway, and the as built, which I would also prefer. Uh, and they looked for an estimate. And of course, we just put, we could probably look at slip lining it, like what we're doing out here for a town hall. That is an eight inch line, but it's roughly the same distance. It's not as deep, and that was about $80,000. So we're probably looking at somewhere between 125 and 150,000 would be my ballpark estimate, which didn't scare them away from the table. They were very interested in it. What they want is more accurate information. So we're gonna have another follow-up meeting uh, with them in the not so distant future, so they can bring some more of their staff on, and I'm gonna bring in our engineer so we can see if we can get a more accurate number for them. And if they want to move forward, eventually they will end up in front of the board to present their um, donation to the town. They are looking to do the work themselves. What, what I mean is instead of giving the town the money, they're looking to hire the company because they don't have to pay for the wages. And we do. So they probably could save some money and get the same job done. And I'm fine with that as long as we have oversight over it and it's our design. But that was that was some good news. Before you go past so, that, just quickly, uh, would they fix it in the same way with the roots have, let's say, have infiltrated the clay pipe? Would they fix it in the same way or excavate the whole site and install a new pipe? So the design will bring that to a head, but most likely we could slip line it or burst line it either way which would go from manhole to manhole, and the company would just send the new line through. It bursts the old line mm -hmm. as it goes, because it's a clay line, so its integrity is already compromised. If you just slip line it, usually you fill the void around it with compressed air and sand, and I don't think the clay line would take it anyway. It would probably fail. So we would burst it as we go. But the design will give us at least two options, if not three. And then how does this impact or relate to, because there was talk of sort of burying the line. So this is the line that they would re-sleeve it and then it would end up being under 20 feet of earth. Yeah, we, we cannot allow that. And they understand the reasons why. Because at some point we still need to get in and maintain that line periodically uh, or uh, repair it. Even. And when you get 20 feet deep and you're talking about an active 15 foot sewer line, 15 inch sewer line, there are very few companies in New England that can even attempt that kind of work. So the cost is exorbitant. It is, I would not recommend anything deeper than 10 or 12 feet, which is we're right at 10 feet now. And they're okay with that. Uh, there was a section up towards where the line comes in mm -hmm. by the railroad tracks that they asked if they could raise it slightly up to that one manhole. But they would leave the rest of it the height it is now and put the spurs on there. Okay. So that's a change from what they had originally been looking at. Good. Okay. Good. Sounds like a good solution. Yes. And my last update is obviously everyone knows the TIP project is starting back up. Uh, phase two. There is, uh, there was some winter work. They worked on the lights at 140. And you probably noticed that they, they put the new lights up there uh, with the new poles, and they're operating right now, but they're not complete. There's still work to be done, but it's it's tricky on that intersection to make the new lights transition over as you go. Um, there is still a, a pretty hefty punch list associated with phase one that is not complete, and we are working on that as well. So I'm hoping in the next week, week and a half now that they're, they're remobilizing, we will have a pre-construction, pre-construction meeting. We pass that point now and talk about the punch list and the scheduling associated with phase two. And as you heard me uh, speak at the beginning of the, the evening about, there's still a lot of sidewalk work to be done in front of um, cultural apartments and making those radiuses across all the way over to uh, post office and then down the house and so it's a realignment of that intersection. So there's a great, great deal of work to be done. But I will keep the board fully involved with everything that's going on. I know you get questions all the time. That is my report. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Good. Thank Thank you. Sweet. Great work. <laughs> okay. It is time to.
move into executive session. Why that trick? It's me out again. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna make a motion for it. I make a motion that we move into executive session under Mass General Law Chapter 38, Section 21, exception number two, to conduct contract negotiations with non union personnel, mm -hmm. the town manager candidate. Thank you. Simon, aye. I would second the motion, Stephen Natalia and I. Marie, you are now aye, unanimous action. Are you going back into open session? We we doesn't you want to yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we'll come back to open session for that. Okay. Just call for a motion seeing how Joseph Layden has accepted our offer and um, is good with the contract. Looks like a motion to sign this contract. Do we need to motion to enter a uh, enter an open session first? I we adjourn to an open session. Mm -hmm. Oh, adjourn to open session. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So now the motion. So I make a motion to execute an employment contract agreement between Joseph Layden and the town of Upton. Stephen Natalia and I. Sign us aye. Second. Second the motion. Green to an L I unanimous to action. Great. All right. Did you want to try to be? Do we want to talk about the contract at all? Does anybody want to say anything? Terms? Oh, you might want to just mention the strategy. Yeah. The, you want to do that start and end date? And we should probably make mention of that. No. Less than. No. <laughs> the agreement shall become effective, effective May 19th, 2022. It'll be in full force in effect until June 30th, 2025. Uh, you didn't know which was the official. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are we That's signing right. one official copy? Oh, one signing official. Yeah, signing. Three copies. Three. Oh, and you know, three how do we know which one is the original? It has no yeah. yeah. it. That's it right there. I have it in my hand. You have the other one. Oh, I yes. already signed mine. Okay. Do these have the corrections on them? Or are you going to? Yes. Those are the ones that I just, just printed them. them. So this is one. Steve's trying to steal it. There's two. And the third has the third. You want to sign what you want me to do? I'm going to give that to you. You want me to sign up, Steve? Yes. We need and I get all three. I'll take all three back. back. You didn't sign this one, Steve. Right. Well, he just gave it to you. He's got to do all three. So. <laughs> all right. No, we now. still have to sign now. If you said there was one original. So no, I'm sorry, not three originals. Three originals. That's why I'm confused. There's three okay. originals. That's okay. You each have one. Right. That's maybe. That's why I gave you that one because you have to rotate all three. I got you. Yeah, I get you. Okay. All right. Very good. Yeah, so this one that you've done. Okay. Hey. And then we got three signatures on all three. This one, no, yeah. This one, you signed. I didn't sign that one too. No, he hasn't seen that. He hasn't signed. You are going to trade. Okay. Actually, you got to win Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 There's one. It's official now. He's can't <laughs> <right. laughs> oh, <right. laughs> Um, so are there people on the phone? Is that yeah. there is someone still there? So is she on the phone? Thank you. Yes, I know. There we go. Was that three? That's three. We're done. Okay. Only because my guess is if there's someone on the phone, they probably can tell them the salary is one hundred and forty-six thousand dollars a year. No. That's public well, information. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They might not have. They might have forgotten to sign off too. Yeah, just not. But mm -hmm. all right. Very good. So, do we want to? If there's anything else, should we adjourn the meeting? Then we do have to sign all the warrant documents. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay. We don't need to do that in session. No. No. All right. Or we already voted. Then you can just adjourn the meeting. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I uh, will second the motion. Steve and the Dummy and I. Sign the side. Marine will now lie in unanimous action. All right. All right. Thank you. 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 Thank